Welcome back to The Existential Way. My name is Kevin Meredith, and today we're talking about this great quote by Kierkegaard. If you think you understand, it isn't God. Now, this, this encouragement, this exhortation is for those of you chosen ones who, not necessarily by your own fallen accord, have been left out, but truly by God's sanctification have found yourself in this fog, this this outcast of realization, you know. And I was thinking about irony this morning because this is a great part of Kierkegaard's teaching is it's not to be speculative, but it's to always keep your doors open in terms of your understanding. And sometimes the understandings themselves are never fixed and they're never meant to be fixed. That's why, you know, you're at a place where you don't understand why you're in the situation that you're in. You know, you, you're, for example, you know, you're in your synagogue, you're in your church, you're in your um, Muslim place of worship, you're in your Freemasonic lodge, you're in the government, you're among your country people, uh, you're among your family, and there's a time in the flesh, a season, if you will, where you truly believe your place amidst those um, is due to the grace of God. Everything is working together. Everything is it fits together for your life. You know everything. You know the the wheels in motion are. Uh, uh, of maintenance are truly are truly being oiled and, and your your life is truly you feel it being truly refined but then all of a sudden in the midst of this fog there's something that happens a season changes uh something strikes your flesh accord you believe it's you you don't understand you're trying to make understanding of this setback and it happens so quick you don't even have time to to put thought into what has what has just happened, you know? Because that's how quick the season has changed. Now you're alone. Now you're in this fog. Now the irony sets in. You're, you have to make sense of this. You think it's due to your own fallen accord, but you haven't come to the place or conclusion that it's of God's sanctification uh, for the next phase, the truer phase in your life. And And, and believe me, a lot of people, God has a, an initial work for people in their lives, for his, for his sake, for his kingdom. Um, but we all too often are in our own flesh accord. Um, we try to remain. We, in, in all the attempts, we try to remain uh, in the flesh and to the flesh of the crowd. In, in, all, in, in these circumstances that have worked so well for us in, in, you know, in the past season, in the past. And all of a sudden... Um, we have to make sense of, of, of what's going on. You know, why are we being separated? Why are we alone now? Why don't we feel the same? What has happened? And um, this is happening all throughout the world, you know. You, the one day you're, you know, you truly have a firm foundation, and so you thought, and you continued with it, and you struggled, and you were, you were um, even challenging the old paradigm, you know. And something happened, something you're set apart now, you know. Um, you thought, oh, the flesh that I was once a part of, the crowd that I was once a part of, the culture that I was once a part of, the bloodline that I'm um, a part of in the flesh, the crowd, my, my social uh, crowd is mine. But now uh, you're finding yourself on the outside looking in. You might still be going, you might still be attending, but something has changed, you know, and, this is the irony. If you think you understand, it isn't God, or it isn't of God. As, as And it's a great quote by Soren Kierkegaard. Is, see, people in their old ways, their old nature, they try to make sense, they try to conclude their existence at that point in time as the completion of their understanding for their life. Their, and that's their life's goal, that's their life's passion. The irony of it is when you get complacent, when you get legalistic, when you get unfruitful, when you don't progress in the 
um, objective of, of your subjective relation to God and vice versa. You don't get subjective with your objective relation to God. Um, a switch happens, you know. A switch is turned on in your life, you know. You, and then it takes a while to understand that what that old thing was, was the works of the flesh, the works of myself, the works of yourself in doing so. It wasn't of God. It wasn't God. God had, and, and at the time, you really believed it. And maybe, um, maybe it was of God at the time, but now it, it's something new. Now God wants to bring you into the examination room. He wants to uh, set you apart so you can truly examine yourself before him. And this is, this is where the ego, the clashing of the ego versus the spirit man has to take place within the individual, you know. For God to really... See, God didn't want to keep you in that place. So you thought it was... It, you thought it was, it was you who did it in your, in your fallen state of the flesh. It was, you, it was on your accord that it happened. Uh, you're blaming yourself and everyone around you is blaming you as well. You know? Because they're still premised on the old state that that, that, that old machine is still where it's at. It's that, the, the function of that specific group. You know, the function of that legalistic manner... Is good enough to replace the spirit of God. It's, the, the theology of your congregation is good enough to replace God. Um, your holidays, without your heart being in it, your 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 special times, you know, your 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 fellowships, you know, your your Bible meetups, your Bible studies, all these things, um, they still go on today. With those believing that those are the end all be all for speaking for the person of Christ, for speaking of the works of God in your life. And yes, they, they may be up to a point, but then what, what happens when you did everything correct up to that point, and yet something in you is calling out for more? And unbeknownst to you, um, as those, those stirring, you know, those inner stirrings have happened, uh, something, somebody, some entity has caught wind of that. And, and, and the tide has turned, uh, you begun to question. You begun to perceive and see differently. And it's happening all the time. You, you, you're, you're seeing this. You're seeing, you know, you're seeing the hidden discrepancy go on at the beginning of this when Christ came in to his own and he preached his three-year ministry. The Jews were there. And best believe at the end, when this scroll is rolled up, when this finality concludes, the Jews will, the, the, the rightful Jews of, of Hebraic descent will be there. You know, and everything in between up to that point, the, 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 the fulfillment of the Gentiles as the church, you know, and everything will conclude at the end. You know, and you, and, and, and you come to this place of seeing that, hold on a minute. And you come to this place and you're, fully believe that you were entitled to the things that the crowd still holds dear, you know, and, and um, so whatever, there's people, there's, there's the crowd, there's those around you, there's uh, powers and in, in principalities in higher places that have caught wind that although your attempts were to remain in that crowd, to remain in that theology, um, God has now sanctified you. Even if you're amidst them, you're, you're still isolated. Your spirit is disturbed because of that. And Christ went through it. You know, there was a, there was a time, as I've mentioned before, you know, I, I believe it's in Scripture, where Christ's spirit was disturbed, you know, uh, because of this gang stalking, because of this. So something happens. What you, and you, you, you try to make understanding of it, you know. Uh, if you think you understand, it isn't God. And this is what happens. We get too comfortable in thinking our understanding is of God. No, our understanding is the human condition. You know, and you may, you may be asking me, well, Kevin, your whole website is a is an extension of of, of, of human reason, logic, uh, attempts at making a sense of what's going on. And yes, it is. I use it as a tool, but even at points in time when I've tried to make understanding of it on my own accord, on my own volition, it doesn't mean that it, that, that it was of God. And it most likely wasn't of God. You know? And, and so, I come to forewarn you that 
this is happening all over the world. God is choosing his out. And, you're, and you may be like, you know, but, but, you know but, but I'm a Jew, but I'm a Muslim, but, but I'm a Christian, but I'm a New Ager, but, you know, but I'm a, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a government agent, but, you know, I'm a Freemason, you know, but, you know, I do these things and that and those things. And, and, and then all of a sudden you got so comforted in your understanding that um, God wouldn't allow it for your singularity, for your end all be all. Now he might let it, he, he allows it for the crowd the end all be all for the crowd but for you you're special to him you were you you're you're chosen out um and the first thing to, to finding that you're chosen out is is seeing that those around you have turned on you you know those around you are not of the same you know place of existence now where you once thought you know well, I'm the odd man out. Well, no, not really. The 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 to God, the odd fellows are out. The the crowd of odd fellows, the crowd of those who who think their teachings and and, and their oral traditions and their theologies and their Bible studies and fellowships and their their con their legalistic conduct according to their religion holds greater preeminence over who God is in trying to describe Him to the individuals that make up their own congregations and crowds. And then you come around and God leads you out. Like you were never meant to be there from the beginning, you know. And this is this is what it is. People are their their lives are awestruck after they meet God in the places where they're so they believe they were so comforted by those around them. You you were in your synagogue, you were in your, you know, you were in the temple, you were you were amidst your, your, you know, your Muslim brethren. You were amidst your Christian brethren. You were amidst um, your, your Freemasons, your government agents, your, your law enforcement fraternity, your college fraternity. Uh, you, you were amidst those people, and you thought you were amidst your family, your, your, your relatives, everybody, your wife. You, and all of a sudden, a great chasm happens. A sanctification, a separation happens doesn't begin physically but it begins spiritually you know but I want to encourage you that the attempt of your life is to face the doubt not in the fact that you on your own will make understanding of it because as soon as you do this as Kierkegaard says it isn't of God God is the great deity of pursuit that remains with us because the hope is for us to keep active and keep moving in in and stay stay empowered in the holy spirit not the spirit of yesteryear of the old paradigm the old babylonian pyramid scheme which he holds great disdain for god holds great disdain for that he he disregards that that's not of his kingdom but you the one who in all your attempts have tried to draw yourself closer, have come to the realization that it was he who was working through you um, and enlightening you that it's not your own understanding that, that you lean on when relating to him, but it's, it's knowing that you can't possibly, in your own understanding, confine God to who his existence is you know, in your life, for your life. You know, as soon as you try to compartmentalize God, it isn't God. As soon as you try to, um, in a sense, put God in a corner for your, you know, to, to, to make God an aspect of your life. Like people, I hear these people and these, these Christians today, this established order today, it, it, it has a place for God. But even the place that they have for God is not the God that we serve. It isn't the God that we serve. You know, their overriding God is Lucifer, Satan. But their place for the God that, that, that they try to define for you to know, the, the true and living God, is not even the true and living God. Because it, that, that little specific place, it's really the place that you, that it was the place of your understanding. See, they, they, that, this Hegelian dialectic allows for that little place of understanding 
uh, for who you thought God was, but it really wasn't the true and living God. It really was the God of human reason and human logic. It was the God of existentialism. It was, it was the, the God of, uh, of the labyrinth that this established ideal has allowed for you to relate to. But now everything has been turned inside out and upside down so that you can see everything from outside in and right side up. A whole different perspective now on who the true, how the true and living God, you thought you, can, you thought you can have him in his place so you could live your life. But now you're awestruck by the fact that everything that um, drew you in fleshly accordance is not the same as God drawing you in, in, in sanctifying you away in his spiritual accordance for, for, you know, in order to allow you to see him for who he is in your life. He is the end all be all. The, and his son who he sent to, to die on the cross for your sins and my sins, the person of Christ in your life, outside of you, as well as inside of you, is the end all be all. And it is how you experience that. You know. And, and a lot of the times is um, existing with it is important. And not trying to overly understand. See, God, He is all-encompassing. He is simple in this respect. But is he, He's also, we can find Him because our human reason, we, we make it so complex in trying to understand who He is. And once you think you understand Him, it is in God. You, know? you have more to exist upon. He has, for, he has more for you. He has more, for, more to show you. More, to, more for you to exist upon in relating to him outside of the scheme and the, and the complacent understandings that we've built to confine him to our, to our complex yet um, lacking human reasons, you know. And so, understand this. If you think, and this is the whole message, I want to encourage you guys. This is going on around the world. People who thought they understood God found out that everything they were doing was of their was of was of the fallen human machination of understanding the fallen human reason the fallen human philosophy of understanding not the will of the holy spirit and and this is why you have a apo- see apostasy is across the board when it comes to established religions the apostasy is actually happening in all, any any religion without the holy spirit is an apostasy and hence, that's most, that's most, if not all, religions. You know, and that's why uh, you have the activity that's going on, evil being, doing evil being, and it's being proclaimed as being right. Good is good is evil, and evil is good. You have this going on. This is the great apostasy. And so, God is going to sanctify you away from your own understanding so that the Holy Spirit can become the greatest work in your life, the end-all, be-all, in and through the person of Jesus Christ for you, you know, so that you can actually follow in the footsteps of the true and living God by way of His Son. So guys, go to the existential way. Learn to unlearn, you know. If you think you understand, it isn't of God. You haven't learned to unlearn. You haven't existed upon the desires of the true self in demasking the false self. You haven't existed upon the desires of in accordance with the free will, uh, the, the will of the Holy Spirit for your life um, as compared to in accordance with um, your own will for your life. You haven't lived in accordance with the desires of the Godhead um, in respect to your temple being made, actually being made alive instead of um, you vicariously living through uh, false attempts of, of confining God to your own human reason and your own understanding. And until we get there as a true small minority collective, not a mind-controlled apostasy of AI Big Brother, 
this is the will of God. Um, unto the microcosm of the world. But it starts with you. And I say microcosm because you might want to go out and change the world, but first you've got to examine yourself and your understanding of what the world really is. And once that can be done, you, 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 the world can be changed because you're changed. And, and you know, and, and the spiritual fruit you can bear thereof, along with your cross, because it, it, it belongs to you. You know, the, This is how much God loves you. So guys, until the next one, Godspeed. Go to the existential way. Uh, begin to learn to unlearn so that the door that you have with man can be closed and the door that should remain to open and, and, and ready for you to constantly step through and work through will be available for God to relate to you in all manners of your walk in life. And um, he will turn your world upside down so that you will see the world right side up. All right, guys, till the next one. I love you guys. Godspeed. Stay tuned. All right, peace out.